Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in Mid Michigan in a zone 5B. And I'm really excited today. We are in our basement and I am going to be doing some potting. I have some new plants that I got from Costco recently that are Longfield Gardens. They uh, put those out and they're very enticing. So we'll take a look at those. I'm also going to have to pot up some different varieties of seedlings or small plants that I'm growing on to make room for some vegetable seeds, which I also hope to get going today. So we've got a busy evening in front of us. All right, I'm gonna show you around a little bit and give you a look-see at what we have going right now and the plans of what we're going to change. Right now we have these ranunculus that are growing on fantastic. This is the secret garden mix and they're doing really great, but they're actually about to grow out of their cans. So I have some proven winter cans over here that we're going to use. It's just the right amount. I have 20 of those and I have 20, maybe 19 ranunculus because one has not come up. So maybe it won't survive, um, but we're going to pot those up because the roots are already coming through the bottom of these and I need them to survive at least another good week inside before I can put them out into like a mini greenhouse and have them successfully um, go overnight with the cold temperatures that we've been getting. <clears throat> We're supposed to still get down into the high teens this week and I actually have brought in these violas for the next couple of days. I'm gonna put them back out after that. I brought in my violas and I brought in my snapdragons as well. They're doing just fine, really, really great growing on. These are the Potomac orange variety and I have the Potomac royal, which is a really beautiful like <clears throat> maroon color to the underside of the leaves and the stems. And then I have potted up my baby geraniums. We have maverick pink and maverick violet geraniums here. So we've got seven plants over here. We've got five over here and we've got three here. And really I'm just trying to grow these on in uh, some pots that have plenty of room for their roots to grow. And then I'll probably be dividing those back out to use in pots outside this summer but they've got a ways to go before we get to our last frost date, which is usually the first week in May. I also have some Lobelia Cambridge Blue that's growing on right here. We're gonna separate those out soon. Uh, not today, but they've got a little bit more growing on to do before I want to kind of prick them out. And then we have this whole tray of violas that has been growing on and doing great. And I've had it outside, but again, I had to bring this one in as well in order to you know, keep it warm enough. And in the next couple of days, I will put it back out in my mini greenhouse. So it should be able to be just fine. Down here, I have some more violas and I also have bunny tail grass, which is doing great. I'm really happy with that. So um, definitely going to keep growing that on. I really loved having that last year. You can see some of the fuzziness at the base of the plant starting to happen. Um, but these are really still babies and we'll continue to grow them on a while longer inside before we can put these out. So let's take a look at a couple of the plants that I got from Costco. These are long field gardens and they come in bags and you can pick out any number of different varieties. I mean they have elephant ears, they have dahlias, they have all sorts of different uh, daylilies and so I picked out these bleeding heart and geraniums. They are perennials. I did avoid uh, purchasing as many as I did last year because last year when I bought the dahlias what happened was they turned out not to be the color that they were on the bag. So I just give anybody a forewarning that it's really hard to tell what color the tuber is going to be. Um, I'm sure they try really hard to have some quality control but last year it didn't work out very well so um, you know just buyer beware it's certainly different buying a plant that's in bloom and seeing it color its color than actually buying it in a bag when it's just tubers but i think these are both going to be beautiful this is the luxuriant version of the bleeding heart and you can see it's a little bit different it has more upright stems with multiple um 
blooms on each stem so I think that is really really pretty and these are really really hardy plants these go down to a zone two and they're good in the shade so they also seem to do fairly well in my clay soil so I'm gonna give these a go I thought it was a decent deal for about $14 I got five of them so we'll plant these up and again because I have such cold weather I'm just gonna put these in a pot to hold them for a little bit allow them to get their roots into some soil and then I'm gonna put them out in the mini greenhouse um, to kind of hold off until we get to that frost free date and this here is a beautiful geranium this is a Cranesbill geranium, which is the perennial variety, uh, which is very different from the pelargoniums. And this one is called Kaya. And this one attracted me not just because of the color of the blooms, but also the color of the foliage is rather burgundy. And I think that's gorgeous. I have a Boom Chocolata geranium, and I really like the foliage on that. So this one seems like a good one. And um, it is good in sun. And they have my name right on the package, so why not get it, right? Um, but here's another picture of it. And the blooms are beautiful, like bluish purple with that just striking foliage. So this one is also very hardy, hardy down to zone three. So this one is something that could even winter over potentially in pots for me. And I do definitely like to look for those kind of plants as well because it may be something that I choose to do in the future to help simplify some of my gardening. These would make a really nice filler. They, they get only about 12 inches tall and about 18 inches wide according to this. Okay, we've got two nice terracotta pots. They aren't super huge, but that's because I'm not expecting the roots to grow on into a really amazing amount during the period of time that I need them to be in pots. This is really just to get them started rooting in and settling into the soil so they have something to grow into. All right, we are going to start with these Dicentra Luxuriant. And inside of the beautiful colored paper bag, we end up with this bag inside that is made out of plastic it's perforated to let the air in and then these are just stuck in what appears to be peat moss so we'll break this open and be careful not to harm any of the new growth that is coming out of these typically when bare root perennials are shipped <clears throat> they start to grow on within the bags that they have because they can only stay dormant for so long so let me get out one and show you what it looks like. All right, so here is what one of the bare roots looks like. So you can tell it's pretty small. So even though these pots that I have are not ginormous, there's gonna be plenty of room for all of them. And we're gonna to wanna to keep the crown, if we can, right about here. So let's get some soil into my pots. Honestly, I could probably go smaller with the size of these pots as well, but I do want to buy myself some breathing room. So if I kind of get caught up in all of the excitement of springtime and have lots of things going on and I'm not able to get these into the ground as quickly as I want, I just want to make sure that they have plenty of space for their roots to continue to grow and for me to divide them out easily to be able to plant into the ground. I'm hoping to be able to plant some of these into my way back garden. So again, I'm just gonna take this and bury it just a little bit. It's a really nice, easy, simple process. You can see this one's kind of squiggly looking, but that's all new growth. When they're in the dark, they do tend to get leggy because the bag obviously doesn't let much sunlight through. I'm 
And here's the next one. Now growing these on does take a little bit more care than growing something that is already fully rooted in and the foliage is all out that you might buy it like a nursery. But the nice thing about it is these really only cost me a few dollars each, right? So if I pay $14 for five of these, it's, it's just to right around $3 a piece. So it's an excellent deal. And I have regular bleeding hearts, just kind of your traditional variety, but I have never grown this one before. Now you will often see that things get kind of bent over in the bag. So I'm gonna plant this kind of like this so the roots are sideways and keeping these right above the soil level. And again, just being real careful with that fragile new growth, make sure I don't break it off. It will right itself, it will begin growing towards the lights. So that won't be a problem. You know what, I think they sent me six, you guys. Well, they didn't send them to me, but I bought six. So either one broke off or I got an extra one here. So we'll have to really make sure we make room for that. This one has excellent, excellent roots on it. And it's okay even if you cover over the foliage just slightly because when you water in, it will poke right back up towards the light. You just don't want to bury it too deep. So now I'm just pushing the soil down a little bit around the roots to make sure that we have good contact before I water it in. They shouldn't need a ton of water right away because these have been fairly dormant, but they are starting to obviously come out. So after I get these outside and I get them in the ground and they start growing on, that's when I'll probably start to fertilize them. They do have a little bit of fertilizer right now in this garden soil or this uh, potting mix. So um, it will be just perfect for them. Seems like every week I get less and less room in my in my plant room here for plants. And we're just running out of space. It'll be a lot better once I can get some things outside. It's just been a terribly cold March this year, especially overnight. All right, let's get these geraniums open. And I told you that these are hardy down to zone three and they're good up to a zone eight in terms of withstanding some of the heat in warmer areas. So they're pretty versatile plant. Alright, and this is what the bag looks like for these. They come with a nice little tag that tells you their height, when they bloom, their color, and how to grow them. So if you lose the outside, you can always cut this tag off and tape it onto your pot or however you want to keep track of it. All right, we've got this pot all set. It's just about full of soil, plenty of room still for the geraniums. These will have much bigger roots though. 
So I'm going to have to be digging much deeper in the pot to be able to plant them. These do look like really nice plants with gorgeous crowns and some nice new growth on them. The roots look nice and healthy as well. Here again we have one that is curved so we're just gonna try to push it up a little bit here so that we can get those to grow straight up. you want to buy some of these it's good to get them as soon as you can from the store because the longer that they sit on the shelves the more chance that they are going to have a little bit of challenges recovering from being in the bag for too long Hopefully I can fit all five of these in here. I think we're just going to be able to do it. I think I'm actually going to trim these roots off slightly. They are very long. And that's okay, it won't hurt it. Um, the plant doesn't have that much green growth on it yet, so a little snip on the roots will not do harm. And here we have the last one right here. <coughs> Boy, does this look like a mess to start with, doesn't it? Doesn't look like much, but these are going to be beautiful later. And I can't wait to eventually give you guys some updates on how these do. Let's get these watered in now. All right, next up, we're gonna pot up those ranunculus. I'm just going to drop one into each pot. 
I'm going to use this peat moss from the shipping bags for those bare root perennials. Just put some in the bottom of each of these. There's no fertilizer in this peat moss though. So that's why I don't want to fill up one single can with all peat moss because now that these ranunculus are growing on, they do need the nutrients that are in the potting mix. All right, so to get these started, I think I'm going to need to really get these full. Maybe the best way is to actually just fill the can. So let's see how these come out. I like to kind of give them a poke from the bottom to be able to get them started in the right direction. All right, that one looks good. All right, so this is gonna be just a process for me to get about 20 of these done. So let's play some music for you guys and you can just enjoy the kind of methodical process and rhythm of uh, repotting plants, which I definitely enjoy.
Well, everyone, I went on and I did the second row of ranunculus and we've got them all padded up here. I topped them off with some vermiculite and they were pretty moist. So again, I just didn't really water them in too much. And I'm just going to give them a couple of days to settle in before I even think about watering them again because they had just plenty of moisture in that soil. So I think these are looking really good. They're going to have plenty of room to grow on in these pots. And hopefully they will be safe in these until it's time to put them outdoors in a mini greenhouse and then get some blooms. These are going to be absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to see them when they bloom. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I sure enjoyed putting these into new pots. It was a bit more exhausting than I thought it was. I was going to do some vegetable seeds, but I guess we'll have to do that another day. Thanks again for joining me and I appreciate all of your comments and I'd love to hear what you're working on, whether it's inside or outside, if you're getting a little spring weather your way. We'll see you next time. Bye.